office meeting. That's new. Yep. <laughs> okay. Um, Jason, I've got a screen that wants me to either continue or leave the meeting. Do I? You just click continue. Yeah, it's it's so that you everybody that's attending knows that there's recording going on. Okay. So that's different. Ah, uh, as I was saying, call to order this special meeting of the Perry Township Board of Trustees on May 25th, 2021 at four o'clock PM. Trustee Wynn. Here. Trustee Hartshorn. Here. Trustee Mears. Yes. So it looks like the first thing on our agenda is the police report that we were not able to get at the meeting um, the other night. Chief Littleton, are you here? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Would you mind going over that report for us, sir? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, so I do apologize. Uh, we had a car accident, a vehicle into a house. So that's why I was unable uh, to give the report last month on time. Um, I need a resolution uh, to accept the resignation officer of Officer Sean Barnes uh, with the effective date of April 23rd, 2021. I make that motion to accept uh, Officer Barnes's resignation. I'll second. second. Trustee Mears? Yes. Trustee Wynn? Yes. Trustee Hartshorn? Yes. Um, the next thing I asked the board for uh, with the resignation of Sean Barnes, um, Officer Anthony Wynn uh, was moved from part time to full time. Uh, his pay increase uh, went to $16 an hour with an effective date of May the 3rd. I'll make a motion that we approve Officer Wynn being moved to full-time. Second. Trustee Mears? Yes. Trustee Wynn? Yes. Trustee Hartshorn? Yes. Um, Officer Stephen Payne uh, is uh, past his um, his benchmark uh, to increase his pay according to um, previous standards set by trustees. Um, I would need to make an effective date uh, with this past pay period, and I don't have that. Um, date right in front of me. Charity, do you have the pay period that just started? Give me just a second. Let me look. Okay. The pay period that just started, I believe, is the 17th. that sound right. Uh, if the board would pass a resolution to increase uh, Officer Stephen Payne, uh, his pay from 16 to $17 an hour uh, with the effective date of May 17th. Just a quick point of order. We don't need resolutions for these. We can just make motions. So I will make the motion. Okay. We move Officer Payne to the rate of pay as stated. I'll second. Trustee Hartshorn? Yes. Trustee Wynn? Yes. Trustee Mears? Yes. Uh, April stats uh, were updated on the website that was done back at the beginning of the month. Um, our fishing derby, uh, we have a date set in August. 
That'll be Sunday, August the 22nd. I'm still working with uh, Officer Douglas on getting a time set for that. Um, and that's all that I have at this time. Okay, great. Thank you, sir. And now the reason that we are all gathered here today um, to discuss the fire and EMS levy that we need to place on our ballot this November. Um, I guess I personally am seeking some clarification on it because I thought we had already come to a decision and come to a conclusion and it was going on the ballot. And now I don't know what's going on. I can speak to that, Mindy. We had not heard anything back on any proposed levy for the November ballot. So I had reached out with a memorandum and made a suggestion if a levy had not been determined yet, that maybe one could be looked at maybe for capital equipment purchases, maybe a smaller amount. And that was only my suggestion to the trustee board. So if you're looking into current um, other levies that you're putting on in the November ballot, if you want to go ahead and share that with us, what your thoughts were on that. We just hadn't received any information. So that was the route I was just pursuing. Okay. Um, and I will apologize on behalf of the three of us that you didn't get that information. Um, kind of in a jam with a lot of information that had not gone out to a lot of places. Um, Jason, you probably, or even Miss, you probably know the numbers better than I do. But the last that I had understood, and please correct me if I'm wrong, we were going to do a renewal levy with adjustments based on the fact that we had just had that tax reassessment of all of our properties. That's correct. Okay. That was the last I heard. Um, so you're so, doing a renewal levy with an increase? Is that what you're doing? That's what I had heard, a renewal with an increase or an adjustment for Is the- Is there increase. a reason you're doing it that way and not just doing a separate levy? Why you're doing it as a renewal with an increase as opposed to a new levy? Well, we had property reassessments that yeah, were I done. Know. Right, so I understand a that. A lot of property values changed and I think the citizens will be more receptive to something that already exists than trying to throw something new at them. But you're still throwing something new when you're doing a renewal with an increase. Understood. It's, it, it's an adjustment. The verbiage is renewal with adjustment. And that adjustment will be an increase, but the verbiage is renewal with adjustment. And the adjustment is because we had a property reassessment. Right. So it would be at the same millage, basically. And I think that's what, 2.5? Is that where we were? I, yeah, um, 2.5. And, and that's what Here. held us up is that due to the reassessment, it couldn't get done in time for us to get on the ballot last year. We basically put everything on hold until that assessment was done. And then we've had a number of other events happen since the first of the year that have made this, uh, while it was a priority, it was something that we kept trying to get to and we kept having stuff pop up on us. Um, so that's been our our goal had been to pick up where we left off last year, which was on renewing the current millage under the new property assessment values and move forward from there. Now, if and, and, and I'm assuming you've reached out to the county auditor and you know exactly how much that's going to generate because we were asking for five additional millage. Our, our proposal was five additional millage. That's what we had from the county auditor when we talked to you guys way back when, was five additional. So you'd have the 2.15 that you already have mm -hmm. and an additional five mills. So what you're talking about is barely any money at all. Just I, I just want you to be aware of that because 2.5, I get it, or two, yeah, on your new value will we'll generate a little bit more money, but it's not gonna be the money that, that we were looking for or that Brookville was looking for. Well, and it may not be what we're looking for either, but we either right. want it to pass or we don't. And if we want it to pass, we're going to have to make it uh, what our people can afford to vote on. 
And the, the other part of this is, is that this, the, I may not be remembering everything succinctly, but we were all in agreement between New Lebanon, Brookville, and Perry Township trustees on the, on the amount of the millage. I may have misstated that here just a few minutes ago, um, but when we put everything on the shelf until the property values were done, we were in agreement. So that's what we had to find out. And I got the latest uh, levy spreadsheet from Harry Hartlob at the county. And I got that in front of uh, Ms. Grill, our new fiscal officer, for her to review and start going through that. Um, and that's, we're basically looking to pick things back up. So consider this, us all trying to get back on the same page. We all may have different recollections of where we left it, but I know we were all in agreement last year. We just couldn't pull the trigger because we couldn't get the assessments done. And the last, I think the last, uh, time the fire levy was put on was like 2011 or something like that so the values were were severely out of sync with what the what what the uh, millage was so we were trying to bring everything current and then see what that had to be so if you're saying that you guys were asking for an additional uh 0.5 millage no right? five not five, point five, five the report i have here is the proposed rate of five mils Am I wrong, JC or Ron? I, I am I off on that the five mils? I have never heard of the five mm. mil. I never knew you guys asked for a five mil. I know that we did talk. We have talked in the past about the point two five. I have never heard of a five mil. We were trying to get to the three percent annual increase over multiple yes. years. Right. Yeah, that's what yeah, that's what we put in the contract, but that's not enough going forward for current for operating expenses and everything else. I mean that that was that was put in there to give you guys some time to get your levies together. If I'm not mistaken, I, Sonia, I, maybe I'm misspeaking, but I'm pretty sure that was what was put in there just to give you guys some time and to give us a little. I mean that was four thousand dollars a year. That that doesn't. I mean that doesn't buy our fire hose. Yeah, I don't recall an exact uh, millage that that five number. Um, what what I recall more was that uh, at least an understanding that the reason those increases were a part of the contract and will unfortunately continue to be a part of any contract that we enter into, um, as long as a, as a fire levy is not bringing in uh, an adequate amount. And, and so, you know, I think bottom line, what Glenn is saying is the number you're talking about, even though it may be a successful levy, would not generate the revenue that each of our respective general funds are having to contribute to make up for what fire and EMS levies are not bringing in. Um, that that uh, number that's in the contract doesn't keep up with the cost of changes of doing business. And you guys have police department and service department, so I know you understand it costs you more every year to run those things. So that's that's no secret for any of us. It's just when the levy money stays flat, then then the the cost of, of each year goes up from somewhere, and that's been coming out of our general fund. Just because we pass a levy, the, the levy is going to need to generate more than just a little bit to, to meet that need. That's, that's, I think, the key thing not to lose here. Okay, so we never, I don't recall ever hearing the, the additional five mil. So let's get down to brass tacks on this. The last time, the, the scope of the conversation was about we weren't that the, the uh, 3% cost of increase per year was not part of the calculation. And that's what we were looking to affect. So what is the, the number at the seven mil that you're seeing per year per department from your numbers? Are you saying what will the five mils generate? Yes. Um, this is based on 2019 numbers um, payable in 2020. 
and it would generate about 288,000 for each department. Okay, what I have, and I'm not sure, and this is, I re, we received this, I don't know if y'all, uh, this was back in March, and, and I don't know if I'm reading this uh, correctly, um, but a five mil is 600,498 for a five mil. Okay, and that would be based on the new valuation of, right. of numbers. This is yeah. old. I mean, this, like I said, I got this back and it was ba based on 2019 old values. Right, so that would be over 300,000 for each of you, right? Correct, yeah. And I'm at 577 for the total on this. So 288 was what it came out to for each department. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, you're you're right because you have high you have you have more accurate values than right. I have. Right. Mm -hmm. And I didn't I didn't know how current this was because like I said this was back in March and uh so yeah. if it was March of this year, it's a lot more current than what I have. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And if 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 we do the 0.25, it's 30,000. And then we split that. So. so I'm working from the spreadsheet that we got from the county auditor's office. And I changed the rate from 2.152890 to 7, which isn't quite a five mil increase, but it's uh, 4.5, right? That brought it to almost $900,000 a year revenue. That is way beyond what you're talking about. So that's what I was trying to get to is what is the value? What is the amount of money required per year so that we can start rolling with the, looking at the different millages in the spreadsheet and see what that would actually cost? So I, I mean, and I think we're talking about two different things, because what you're talking about doing is taking what you already have and then adjusting that. What we're talking about would be additional millage, no. not including what you already that's, have. That's not that accurate. What you're talking about? That's not accurate. The current millage with the new property values. But the is, current millage won't be applied to the new property values if you leave it as is. As a renewal. That, I know. But okay. this is based on us either as is or with a renewal or with a 2.5 replacement and then the option of a replacement plus. So they gave us a spreadsheet that we can plug the millage into and it'll spit out what the total generated is gonna be. Um, so that's what I was trying to get to is what is the dollar amount per year for the first year to figure out where you start from the 3% annual increase so that we can see where that falls and try to build that into a five to 10 year average and make sure that it pays throughout the, the term of that uh, levy, right? So are you trying to figure out just what that annual increase is based over the next 10 years? I'm trying to figure out what the millage needs to be based on the current property values that we've received from the county auditor's office. What is the dollar amount that we need to achieve, that we need to get to meet the contract? And then what millage do we need to apply to get to that dollar amount? Yes. So you're just looking at the actual increase built in to the current contract, the extra 3% each year. That's all you're considering right now. No, That's we're asking- I wanna get clarity. We're, we're, so, we're asking Yes, we're asking what is the number since, and I'm sorry, ma'am, uh, from New Lebanon, I, I, your na name says Vister. I know, and I don't know why I can't get that to change. It's Glenna. Glenna, I'm sorry, I forgot your name. That's on me. Um, I'm sorry. So you had a number basically based on 7.5 millage. No, that the, no the, the number I have is based on five, five mils. If you put a levy on the ballot for five, for five mils. mils. Okay. You would be at five, according to this. Now, according to Missy's stuff, you'd be about six hundred thousand dollars a year, and that's, plus, that's on top of what we already pay. Correct. Right. Well, yes, yes. And, that, and that's leaving the levy you already have alone, right? And putting an additional five mil levy on, right? And, and in general, usually that that's what happens with with levies, as opposed to doing levies with renewals or levies with with increases and adjustments. Those are a little tougher. Yeah, so it would be close to seven, seven hundred, seven hundred thousand, seven fifty, with what we have. 
if I'm right. Cur yes, I think currently we're at about 138 or something like that each a half, right? Is that about what you're getting? That sounds right, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, about 138. It's, yeah, it's just under and, 138. And, yeah, so. and we're not saying, we're that was what was proposed way back when. You guys need to decide what it is. I mean, we need money to operate. Chief Fletcher Under, needs understand. money. Chief Kaiser needs money to operate. Yes. That's the and, bottom line. We need money to operate. We'd like to be able to operate into the future right. and not have to keep going back to the voters. That's, so, that's the other across the board plan. So, so that said. And that's kind of the same boat we're in. Yes. And we understand where you're coming from. We're asking you for how much so that we can figure out the millage. Right. And you're asking us about the millage. Well, we don't know what you need to operate. So if we just meet in the middle and say, look, it, right now you're at about 138 each per year. What amount of an increase to that? Because it hasn't been increased in a while. It's based off old property values. Uh, so we'll just break on that. And we'll say moving forward with a new levy, how much is needed the first year of that levy? Because that's going to give us a key as to what what we start with and what we apply a 3% increase to on top of that to make sure it's baked in. And then we can figure out what the millage needs to be based on uh, as is renewal replacement or replacement plus. And then we can tell you what the millage is gonna be if we know how much the increase needs to be annually. Let me just jump in real quick and clarify just in case it helps with any understanding. The three of us do not have any access to our financial history mm -hmm. currently, and some of that is keeping us from knowing the valuation of what we paid in the past for fire services, what the increases have been. Um, so that may be why we're sounding rather clueless on some of this, but the bottom line is we don't have the numbers in front of us and don't have access to those numbers right now as to what dollar figure we need to contribute each year starting with the next contractual year in order to receive fire services i think sonia can send you the uh, history for the last couple of decades here probably fairly quickly yeah i sent that in the last email i sent it was an excel spreadsheet where one tab was general fund and I basically gave you a breakdown of how much of the fire levy and the EMS went into operating and fire capital and below I also had it broke down between Clay and Perry Township for us of what was actually contributed from the fire levy. I can resend that. So so what I have sorry Jason. Nope go ahead. Uh, in 2020 Clay Township paid two ninety seven seven fifty nine, and Perry paid a hundred hundred thousand six hundred twenty four. I'm pulling it up here, Missy. Okay. Are you on the general fund or the fire capital improvement sheet? Uh, I don't know what I'm in. Uh, that's that was the general fund, and then the fire capital improvement fund was Clay Township was seventy nine nine, and Perry was. 3350. That is a correct document. Okay. That's what I sent you recently. Yeah. That's the actual breakdown back to 2015 for both townships that we've received for fire protection contracts. Okay. Based on the levy. This from you, Sonia? Because no, I provided it. No, okay. I provided it to okay. them. It's something I've always I've given to the trustees annually, especially over at Clay Township when we meet with them annually. So okay. It's just something I've put together for a number of years. Okay. To share with my council because it shows everyone the amount that we have to subsidize our operating, uh, fire operating, which is in our general fund and our fire capital improvement. I'm not finding that email. So if someone can ship that over to I'll me. send it back out and I'll copy Glenda on it. Okay, thank you. Because I have no idea why. And just in general, so in this this number moves just a little bit, a percentage point or so, but I can tell you uh, for Brookville, um, the levies that support our operation fall anywhere from 20 to 22% short of what our actual costs are every year. So that's what has to come from our general fund. And 
that number goes up every time the costs go up, but our levy income remains flat. That's, you know, it's a unique situation because in many businesses, your, you know, what, what the revenue is, is what happens. And uh, without our general funds supporting the operation, uh, personnel would go away, ambulances would go away. We wouldn't be able to take on contractual customers uh, to the extent that we do based upon just what the levies bring in. Yeah, and Jason, you were talking about um, the 3%. That's just an average because we could get hit any given year in a three-year span. We could get hit for 6% in percent increases over three years. So the 3% is the low end. But we could see an 18% increase in everything in three years. Right. So, so we had a couple of different numbers, I guess, that we had been throwing around. One was a 3% annual increase to be able to cover rising costs of equipment, training, personnel, et cetera. That was a number that was mentioned previously. Um, now, Chief Fletcher just mentioned that on any given year, uh, the fire department is about 22, you say 22% under what needed to come in? Roughly, I, I get depressed and I leave it to Sonia to tell me exactly what that number is. I just know it's been 20 the last many, 20 plus last many years. Right. So just looking at this, I haven't looked at the, uh, the values here. Give me one second. And, and probably while you're looking at that, I think the other important thing to say is we wouldn't be looking for a Perry Township levy to make up that ent entire 22%, uh, potentially not even half of that, but we absolutely have to make a dent and, and we, can't, we can't have that number continuing to climb with no effort made or no success in increasing revenue from the levies. That's, that, that will create an unacceptable situation and eventually I'll have a council that'll say, okay, enough is enough. We've got to change the way we do business because we can't afford, we can't afford to continue to subsidize the levies with the general fund. Our general fund takes a tremendous hit uh, already as it is. Okay, and when you, when you say that, what, what does that, okay, what does that mean? Say, say whatever we do doesn't pass. Are you saying that you're not gonna supply service for our people? Well, I guess that, that, that would sound like a threat and I absolutely don't want it to sound that way. I guess I would just generalize it that if Perry Township or, or any uh, contracted services wasn't able to pay their bill uh, for services, uh, at some point, the city of Brookville would not be able to go ahead and continue to provide services, even though those services weren't being paid for. That's, that's. But I, uh, okay, I, 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 I understand that, but you still, you're, we still give you, you know, say 130,000 right now, say it didn't pass, mm -hmm. you're still getting 130,000. But if it doesn't pass and we can't get it passed, you're saying you're gonna take away the service. No, I'm, I'm saying if, if we get to the point where, let's just say you, you say, hey, all we can do is 130,000, yeah. then the next question needs to be, what can we get for 130,000? Because right now you get the full services of, of two fire departments for the entire right. township. Well, and each of you get 130. So if my husband's having a heart attack, you're going to decide if that's, if he's going to, if you're going to come out for that. I, these are just questions that I'm asking. It, you know, if we go back to our people and, and if they listen to this. I, I guess the better way to, to explain that I would suggest would be um, regardless of how Perry Township chooses to provide services, whether you want to contract with Brookville, New Lebanon, or pick any other community that has a fire department, or maybe start your own fire department and provide fire and EMS services, 
you'll have to have money to do that. Oh God, yeah. Okay? And so it, it would, if you would liken it to the fact, um, how would we provide any service if we don't have the revenue to do it? And right now, so, so if you didn't have the revenue necessary to run the police department and it's your own police department, you'd have to make cuts right. or you'd be taking money from your general fund to make up for what the police levies didn't, right. didn't cover. So you could do that. The right. difference in our relationship here is it's not your general fund that's making up the shortfall right. for what the levies don't bring in. Right. It is the, it's the general funds of New Lebanon and Brookville. Right. So I can't speak for, for our council or New Lebanon's council, but I would anticipate looking ahead that if we continue to have shortfall, that at some point they will make the decision that something has to change. And what that something is and how that happens, no one wants to put anybody in jeopardy. And I can assure you that JC and I both want to continue to serve all the residents, Brookville, New Lebanon, and Perry Township, the same as we always have. Right. We don't want to be put in a position where the elected officials we work for tell us something has to change. That's, I, I think that's as fair as I can, I can summarize that. I don't, I don't know if, if, I don't know, personally, I'm not saying something has to change. I'm just saying, I know you guys are hurting because your levies didn't pass. So you don't have that money. We're hurting because we don't have the money either, you know, and then I've got to, that's beside the point. But, you know, we're all hurting, so I think we should all try to come together, and that's my point. I just want to make sure that we can get this pass, that we can have the service. That's what I'm sure. trying to say. And, and yes, it would be nice if I could give you the five mil and give you 600,000, but I don't, that's not, I don't think my, my residents, you know, look how many people are out of jobs and everything else. That's the point that worries me. I want to make sure that I give you enough that I can continue the service. That's what yeah. I'm and, and I would agree, and, and I, would, I would tell anyone, I've told the Clay, Clay Township trustees the same thing. It's not a fair question to ask JC or myself, hey, how much money do you guys need? No, Because yeah, yeah. you right. would never be able to pass the levy oh. to meet the need. So the, more, the better way to look at that, in my opinion, is you have to ask yourself, what would be a, a figure that would be realistic that we believe we could successfully pass? Right. Exactly. And the question, the question to the city managers would be, is, is that a, a fair and equitable amount that meets, meets the need right now? Because I can tell you neither city manager is, is unrealistic and unreasonable either. So, so the demand isn't going to be for, for something that's unreasonable, that, that it will never stand a chance. So I think we're all in agreement there that it doesn't snow good to take something to the people that we all sit here and know isn't going to be successful. Exactly. But what that exact number is, uh, I can just tell you, neither neither fire chief is going to be able to tell you, hey, how much do you need? Right. Because right. Uh, you, you would never be able to meet the need. Yeah. No, uh, we, we understand that. And it's just like you said, if the money's not there, then we have to start cutting personnel. And it's the same way with my police department. If my money's not there and my levy fails, I have to start cutting police. And that means not 24 hour coverage. So that, you know, and, and like you said, we're all hurting right now. We are all hurting. We did not get the money from the government. So that's what. Well, and, and so, and so when we talk about the now here's the difference between not having your own, own department and having your own department. If, if you don't have the ability and you have to cut, then you have to cut before I would recommend cutting personnel and limiting what I can do. Uh, in the city of Brookville, I would recommend that we look at cutting how much area we cover. We cover 36 square miles right now. And, and that, that, again, when you overextend yourself, that, that would be the question. Or do, do we, are we carrying too many people or are we carrying not enough people to cover how much area we cover? And so that, you know, it, it may be that one of us gets put in a position where we can't afford to contract with our neighbors to provide that's that help you were talking about we can we can help one another out so we'll share services you don't have to have your own fire department but if it gets to the point where we can't afford to have uh multiple customers then those decisions have to be made and those are made at a pay rate above mine that's for sure so 
let, let me jump in here for a minute. I've been getting my math geek on here a little bit, so please uh, try to bear with me. Um, at the rate that we're currently paying, if we were to assume across the board that we are short 22%, because that's the number that was given, just as a place to start, that would mean that we'd have, we, would, we should be paying each department $168,360 a year. Okay, just bottom line. Um, I was going through the spreadsheet that the county gave us, and it looks like a 2.8 mil levy would provide $176,988 per department annually. I know I can't ask you what you need, but that would be right around almost a 30% increase to what we're currently paying per year to both departments. And looking at the tax rates and everything else, a 2.8 mil replacement levy wouldn't hurt anyone's, uh, based on the value of their properties, it's, it's still, you know, you're talking $5 here or $10 there. It, it's not gonna be anything that kills anybody. And in the back of my head, uh, Chief Fletcher and Chief Kaiser have done a really good job of, I hear this voice in the back of my head that tells me how much it costs to start a fire department. And if people don't want a levy, they don't want to hear that number because, uh, I, you know, millions, five million easy to start a fire department. Um, so I'm thinking that if we if that sounds like a good jumping off point. Would be the 2.8 mil replacement levy, which would give each department one hundred seventy six thousand nine hundred eighty eight dollars fifty cents a year. On top of what we're already paying. No. Okay, that's in total. place of. Okay. I'm talking about just doing a, a replacement to increase the millage, be done with the old one, lock in the new property values, and kind of reap the benefit of that where we're not charging people twice for it. We're not multiplying values. One value, uh, they don't look that bad across the board. I can, I'll even. Uh, and we want to make sure that that's a uh, continuous, Jason, because that's what we have now. That's one good thing that's have saved right. us. So here, I'm going to I'm going to show my work a little bit because okay. I'm sure Sonia and uh, Glenna are more familiar probably with this spreadsheet. Yeah. Um, I just replaced the value at 2.8 percent across. And that's what it gave me. And the difference comes out. So, you know, that would be, like I said, 100 just under 177,000 per department per year. I think that uh, you can see the home values here and the cost for those. It's not exorbitant. It's nothing that's, go I think that the residents will be open to this. I think it's something worth discussing and seeing if this is something that, that uh, we can get through. Now, okay. Yes. Go ahead. I just wanted to make sure you were up in the right area because it says as is or with a renewal. And then the two and a half replacement, is that at current values? I'm just looking through. So this is, yeah, the, the problem was is that this doesn't change values. All right. <laughs> this I'm is a different. Making sure you were at the section. right area. Right. Well, so this is what I'm saying is that if, if, if the numbers that came out of it are right, that gives us a starting point for our new fiscal officer to get with Harry Hartlob in the, in the, in the county and say, are we reading this right? Would a 2.8 mil replacement levy make us whole? And if the answer to that is yes, I think it, that is something that we could probably sell. That's something that the residents wouldn't be opposed to. And like I said, the alternative is, is nobody wants to hear that uh, Brookville, has to cut back their, their service and 11 and have to cut back their service because they don't have enough money to do what's their responsibility and what we're able to pay. And then that puts the onus directly on the township because by law we're required to provide those services. So, you know, this isn't a bad way forward and it's definitely better than starting our own fire department. I do not wanna go through that palming exercise of figuring that out over the next 10 years. Um, our fire department is not an option. We don't well, and that's what I'm saying. It, basically, that's my way of saying it's not an option. Yes. So 
this is how we kind of get the ball rolling. That's our sounding board. That's the way forward. Um, Charity, are, are you still with us? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Is what I'm saying making sense to you? Yes, my only concern is, is I can see Glenda, Glenda, and I'm just wondering what's going through her head. <laughs> just because yeah, I'm just, fairly, being fairly new here, I'm just. I, I'm just curious. I mean, I understand what you're saying and I understand you're, you know, you're talking, a, you're talking a few tens of thousand dollars extra to each department, but you've got to remember, we're still talking about over time, this is going to go, this goes up every single year. These costs go up exponentially, like huge. And, right. you know, I'm, what we're trying to do is look at a long-term solution. I think what you're looking at here is a short-term solution personally. Well, I, when I, I, when I don't have what I have to build up to, and I can't work out a 10 year average, then I have to start somewhere. And this is me starting somewhere. So if, if, Looking at these numbers, it doesn't look like it's going to be what we need to start with. Um, then okay, fair enough. You know we can we can work from that. I haven't even started to figure in like a three percent increase per year on top of the first year amount. That's what I'm trying to get to right now is what I, gets us to that okay. first year amount. So Jason, are you adding that? Are you expecting that 3% then to be in the contract every year? It was my understanding that that would be in the contract every year okay. because that was something that I was think, mentioned last year. All right. I think that's part of the confusion then. The 3% okay. is in the contract until you pass a levy that helps cover our costs. Okay. So the it's, a, it's an either just or. becomes okay. the contract. Okay. It's an so either I or. So I think that's where part of the problem's coming from. There, there's, that's, there's a mis disconnect there. So okay. the the 3% was there because that was the least amount we we thought being nice we'll minimum. put that in there that was the minimum knowing that it you know it takes a lot more really to do these. So what we're trying to do is look at a long-term solution so that our fire departments can continue providing good service across the board to everybody. Um, I think right. that's where this this millage needs to be and we need to be looking at it from that angle. So if that's a three mil levy or if that's a five year mil levy or whatever that is, I, I think our assumption was that this would be a new levy and the old levy would just be there as it is. I I, I, I don't know where you stood, Sonia, but that was kind of my assumption. Yeah, that's the way that, yeah, that this was gonna be a whole brand new levy. The old levy just hangs as is and a new levy goes on. And that's why I had done the memo and sent it to you back on the 10th of May, just as a suggestion to maybe do a levy just for capital equipment, because it's something tangible, so people can see it, feel it. And that was our thought process behind the suggestion. Yeah, we've had some people tell us about, about revenue initiatives in the past that they just don't like a, a, a very general, hey, you know, let us have some more money because we need it kind of message. Mm. And maybe this there, there's some more success of saying, hey, here's exactly how much money we're asking for. This is this is how many ambulances and fire trucks over its life it's going to put in this fire station and how many it's going to put in this fire station. And, and this is exactly what's going to happen with that. If you wanted to do, if you wanted to hang your hat on something that people could actually touch versus just saying, here's the money, we trust that you're going to do the right things with it. That's that was the basis of, an, of a capital improvement suggestion. Has Sonia has have has uh, Clay Township decided how they're going to run theirs? Because I know they haven't passed theirs yet, have they? No, I need to circle back around again. I had asked both townships to hold off until our levy was decided back in May, so I need to circle back around with them. Okay. That was our suggestion to Clay Township, also. Right. So just to clarify, because I was in a whole different ball game thinking here, the 3%, 369 as it was, or an additional three on top of each, that goes away if we pass the levy yeah. for the proper amount. Okay, yeah, I, that was not conveyed. Yes. Right. Um, okay. I, I and I so think that was in, I, I, in have the the, I have the contract in front of me and it's section eight. 
and it says section seven where it breaks down the additional 3% each year will not apply if the trustees pass the fire EMS levy during the contract time that generates more than what's listed in section seven. And that's what I understood initially and then was led to believe that that was, in, there was some change on that again, that we were to, I kind of thought that's what we were discussing again today. Right. So that makes a lot more sense. To and me I was just looking at the middle of that spreadsheet where they put in just a template 2.5 mil replacement levy. If we doubled that as a replacement levy, I mean, that a five mil replacement levy would generate $732,051 and some odd cents, which is much, that, that's almost, that's probably what 2.7 uh, times what we're paying now. So I'm just, that's where I'm trying to get to an understanding is, is that whether it's a capital equipment on top of what we're doing or a replacement levy, I'm trying to find the ballpark that we can tune the numbers to. So, you know, are we $50,000 per year apart from what we're paying now? That over 10 years, does that get us to the average of what's required to uh, make sure that you're able to stay whole as operating your fire departments and supporting us as we require to be supported. Because, I mean, I can sit here and write down a number and slide it across the table to you, but I don't have a starting point, right? So just looking at the numbers that are in front of me, uh, based on the current property values, and I think that's part of the gap was initially when we were talking, I guess when it was mentioned about an additional five mil levy, that was based on the, on the older property values which understand that the property values for our levy were based on, I think, 2011. So they were, they were very much not up to what the current revenue would have been for 2019 even. Um, so trying to figure out, we're, we're trying to figure out what number we need to plug in to make this work. Now, even at, at a, a five mil levy, it's not exorbitant, but I think that's overkill for what's trying to be accomplished here. So if we're gonna look at, let's say two separate options. One is keep our existing levy and add a capital equipment levy to it, fair. What does that need to be per year? We can throw a number out there and, and try to make, you know, get to the millage and then give it to you, but then that generates a lot of busy work. So I'm trying to figure out what a good starting area is if we're gonna look at this and we don't need an answer now, okay? This is something that's gonna require probably at least one more conversation to get down to brass tacks on this. But we're trying to figure out what is, let's say we try to target a 10 year average to define the millage required per year to meet that over a 10 year period. What are we looking for there? I'm not asking you, I know Chief, you had said, you know, don't ask you what you need because we wouldn't like the number, but I'm asking what gets us closer, right? So we have a new fiscal officer who's going to be working with the county on this. And I mean, we can run through a number of scenarios. I'm, I'm sure Harry Hartlob could give us a spreadsheet that we could literally plug in a percentage and it would tell us each one of the options for what it would be. Um, that's not a problem, but I don't want an infinite workbook that we have to go through to figure out which one fits. So I'm just trying to narrow the work down just a bit to say, I know you can't tell me the real number because the real number is higher than you would get anyhow. Yeah, for, for a specific number, I'd have to defer to my boss anyway. She doesn't ever let me tell right. her how much money I want. Right, she, all, all we so, do know is so what we we're paying would, now isn't enough. All right, Jason, right. are you able to share that spreadsheet that Larry sent you, or is that something I need to request from him? I can share it. I, I am a very sure. Because at least you'd have the values plugged into that. I can play right. with it. And you know, I like had, I said, the, the replacement doesn't adjust the values, so I think you're right on that, but I looked at just doubling what a 2.5 replacement would be, and that number should be correct. 
okay. uh, based on what's there. So here, I'll send this to you and uh, leave. I, I should have Glenna's email address somewhere too. Glenna, what is your email address? Um, G Madden, M A D D E N, at newlebnanoh.org. I spelled Lebanon wrong. It's A N, right? Yeah. I know people are going to kill me for that. <laughs> A N O N, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Oh, yeah, it happened. All right. So let me know if you get that here in the next minute or so. Um, so yeah, that I guess that, that that's a really good way to start talking from this the same dialect on this and, and uh, getting close to where we need to be. So. So are we wanting to look at this, take some time, and then schedule another work session in a month, or so? Well, the deadline's August the 4th, our, I believe, I, to get would, on the November ballot. Yeah, I would say our cutoff is is the end of July. Don't want to go past the end of July because then you're just trying to limbo under a bar that you can't get under. So hey, we don't wait if we don't have to. Let's well, make it. Well, that's what I'm saying is that if, if the end of July is where our back's against the wall. So okay. um, if we could go and... Uh, let's say meet in two weeks. That's fine. And if uh, Glenna, if you and Sonia, feel free to get with Charity, fill her in on anything that, that she should be knowing historically about our relationship and uh, help her maybe shape some questions for the county to make sure that she's on your wavelength. Because if she's on your wavelength, then it's a much simpler conversation for us because we're not all just trying to figure out where we fit. Right. Okay. Hey, can I, and this may be a silly question to both Sonia and, and Glenda, where do you guys get the money for your, your fire department? That, where do you get that? That's what's on that spreadsheet. We get money from Clay Township and Perry Township on the fire contract, the fire okay. and EMS levies, right. and we collect EMS billing. Okay, but what I'm talking about in, in the city of Brookville. The income tax. Income tax. Okay. And ours is ours is a fire levy. We have a new Lebanon inside the city. We have a fire levy also. And what is your fire levy? Five mills. Five mills. Okay. And then we have Jackson Township also. So like they have clay, we have Jackson. Okay. So you all do you you do Jackson, New Lebanon, and us. Yes. Okay. And we do clay in Perry in income tax. And I know Clay currently has two levies on. And Missy, the one thing to realize is there, there are actually residents in the city that, that and they're, they're accurate in this, just as they would be in New Lebanon, that they're paying for the fire department twice, once through their township levy, mm -hmm. once through income tax in Brookville, and in New Lebanon, you have folks that would be paying both the township and the right in the village, in the village uh, okay. levy as well. Yeah. Right, because I know we got the in incorporated, incorporated. Okay, yeah, and the unincorporated yeah. residents in the unincorporated area aren't paying both. Okay, okay. Is that how Terrace Park works? Are they yes. paying twice? Everything south of Westbrook's in Perry. Yeah. Yeah, my house I pay in Jackson, and I pay in New Lebanon for fire. So. so my money is paying for some of Perry Township's fired. So. Well, thank you very much. Really, you're welcome. <laughs> but, you know, that, and I think that's where it, we're trying to make things a little fair across the board. And so everyone's getting the same response, the same everything. Everybody's getting the same emergency uh, response and, and equipment and everything, but not everybody's paying the same. And you I, I, can't yeah. put a value on right. if somebody saves your life, somebody saves right. your house. So you got to put it that way too. Right. Yeah, I want no him, I to, want that, him to show so. up at my house yeah. as quickly that, and as, yeah. 
with yeah, all the equipment. To share with this, enough millage on if that if you had to have those services. So. Something right. to share with this group of trustees that I know we, we've shared and, and uh, at least agreed to disagree on in the past is is the trustees in Clay often remind me that they pay more for services than does Perry Township. And it is extremely difficult because you can have multiple measuring sticks to determine what someone's fair share is. There, are, there is much less call demand in Perry Township than there is in Clay Township. So that might justify the, the difference in the amount of money contributed. But when it comes to fire and EMS services, it's not just about who uses the services. It's, it's also the insurance of, it still cost us money to have those fire engines and ambulances ready to go, whether they're called for or not. It's still, it, to, to exist simply costs money. And that is another measuring stick that says, yeah, everybody should probably pay closer to the same amount because everybody has the same equipment sitting there ready to go for them. So, you know, we can argue about, I think the one thing everybody would agree on, the funding mechanism that Ohio law has in place to make our, our, our essential service uh, available is horrible. Property tax isn't perfect. Income tax isn't perfect. Um, none of it is, is, is uh, perfect. So uh, what, what can we do to meet our needs and be fair and realistic and understand that we don't have an endless source of revenue? I think we're all on the same page as far as wanting to see the fire departments get the money that you need to keep all of us safe. Um, you know, I and Chief Fletcher knows I've been the thorn in his side for many years, and I have loyalty to the Brookville Fire Department, and I did run time at Station 69 many moons ago. So I want to see our township contributing to those two fire departments just like anyone else that would come in that we would be working with or we would have a relationship with. Our biggest stumbling block, our biggest obstacle is going to be convincing the residents of that. And we have people now who, the, you know, the farmers didn't fare well last year. We've had COVID, we've had the tornado, you know, everything just keeps going boom, boom, boom. And the expenses have outweighed our income by a long shot. So while we are here are all in that same place, we want the levy, we want the money, we want the services, we need to figure out how to best convey that so that people will vote for it when it is on the ballot. And I understand where you're coming from, but also those things you mentioned all required EMS and fire responses. Absolutely. I, I, I mean, that, that Absolutely. justifies the means. I, I, no, I get it. Absolutely. Oh, I mean, I, no, and I, I totally agree with you, Glenda, but it's just like Brookville put on twice now the parks and the roads and people voted it down. Why do you think they voted it down? Because they don't have the money or they're hurting or whatever. I think that's what Mindy's saying. People are hurting and I know it's just like us. Like I said before, you guys need money. We need money. We're not getting any money, we're, you know, so that's what we're trying to do is come well, up with the best solution. And you have to remember if people are hurting, they'll be hurting a lot more if they don't have a house. We, is they that lose property or equipment. And let's, let's not confuse, oh. let's not confuse essential services mm -hmm. with optional parks right. and roads are not essential. No, no, no. You understand. And, that's, no. and, and so that's where that choice can be made. Yes. And, no. And I understand what you're saying. And, the, and I, you know, and you know that I back you and I have used oh. you guys my entire freaking life. I can tell you how many times I've taken my dad to the hospital, but it's just what I'm saying is people have, you know. Well, people we will have to make a, people will have to make a choice. And, and yes. so for instance, if Perry Township is, is in a position, Perry Township will have a bill that's due. Even, mm -hmm. even if you pass zero levies, the contract makes clear if you want the services, yes. there's a percentage additional. Right. And where's that money come from? Well, yeah. that's, that's not, that's not for Brookville to decide or New Lebanon decide. Perry Township will have to decide where are we getting that money from if we want those services. So really what, what you're telling your residents is this. We have a bill that's, that's coming due and 
where do we want that money to come from? Do we want to pass a levy that meets the need for now and the future? Or do we have to find things to cut that the general fund would normally do so we can make up for what we owe for an essential service? That, that is the position that you're And again, the, you're right. The challenge is convincing residents to understand that. If, if, if we don't want fire and EMS to go away, where else in our limited resources are we going to pay for that bill? Because the, the bill will be there. We, you know, we see it every day. Um, Charity, you had a question? Yeah, I'm just trying to look at some of the stuff and, and playing with the spreadsheet that we got um, for you know, projection of possible rates. And like you said, Jason, that top part seems to calculate a lot better than the bottom sections do. So I'm kind of looking here, and if I'm if I'm doing it correctly, say that we were to do a four mil. This is showing that it would generate five hundred and five thousand six eighty two twenty eight. If we divided that, of course, by two between the two different fire departments, we would be looking at two fifty two. 841 each. Now, the difference between what we already had at the, where at the, what the current rate is on a $200,000 home right now, or on the proposed that was on here was $150.70. Taking it up to four would raise on a $200,000 home, uh, raise it to $280. Am I correct in what I'm looking at? For those that are more familiar with it, I don't. I think haven't so. opened it up yet, so I would need to look at that. Yeah, I, I, I don't think so. Like Sonia said before, I, I think the property values that are, or the values that are associated with the top part of the graph, mm -hmm. are based on our current property values as a, okay. as a, uh, a renewal as is a renewal. So yeah, that that's the part where uh, you'll probably have to get with Harry Hartlob. I sent you his info um, and talk about like a four mil replacement, right? So he can generate what's at the middle of that uh, spreadsheet where it says okay. 2.5 replacement and show the co annual cost per home value and give us that output. And I, I would probably start at a four mil calculation wise, a four mil replacement, because I think that gets us a, a lot closer because I was talking about a five mil replacement, mm -hmm. which was you know seven hundred thirty-two thousand, basically doubling that the re the uh, replacement value at two point five, um, and you can run through a number of scenarios with him. That way, we have the numbers in our back pocket, and we can work towards what gets us across the finish line with this, so that we can get something on the ballot that people will understand. Uh, I think the spreadsheet itself, if open. If, if there was a, a part of the spreadsheet for replacement that was similar to the top part that shows the, the rolling calculations, uh, I think that would go a long way, along with the listing of per home value, what the annual cost is, which, like I said, it's not exorbitant. It, it's actually, you know, I think for a $200,000 house at the 2.5 mil, it's $175 a year. And that's so, on top. And that's on top of what they're already paying. No, that was that was from the replacement okay. table, right? Okay, so that so, doesn't add to what they're already paying. So, okay. no. So okay. let me ask this question to Glenda and Sonia: If we get with the county and we basically run the numbers on, let's say, uh, a three mil, a three point five mil, a four mil, a four point five mil, a five mil, and do that all the way up to let's say a seven mil, just to get the numbers, so that we actually have we can talk something tangible about what the cost is to the residents, what the revenue generated would be, and then we can apply that over a multi-year model and see if that actually gets us to where we need to be over the next 10 years. And if that's the case, then, then it makes it a much more simple conversation if we have all those numbers laid out in front of us. Um, would you concur with that? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Okay, and then, and my question is, if we do something that big, that the levy, if we go whatever we decide or whatever, 
are you guys okay for 10 years that you're not going to come back and ask us for more money? <laughs> As of today, yes. Tomorrow, <laughs> maybe not. Yes. So, no. so, here, her. so here we can go, here we can go, and I can ask my residents for four and a half, five percent rate increase, and then two years you can come back to us and say, that's not enough, we're going to buy, we need this, or we need this, or that. So you can come back to us and ask, right? Well, oh, I think anytime that's possible, and we don't have a crystal ball, well, but no, I can, I can tell you, I can tell you that both departments and both municipalities do long range planning. Mm -hmm. We know what the needs are for the next five and the next 10 years. Okay. And so if the managers say that, that as we sit right now, that, that it's potential that, that that amount could cover for the next 10 years, that has to take into to consideration things like tornadoes and pandemics and whatever murder locusts might come up next year comes into play. Those are those are things that we just cannot build into a five year and a 10 year plan. No. So can we guarantee that, that we wouldn't have to come to anyone down the road and say, hey, our expenses are outdoing our revenue? No, but I guarantee you, we just we just wouldn't say, hey, um, we decided that, that uh, although we were content doing it a, a couple of years ago for that amount of money, we've decided it's more. No, we'll have we'll have absolute justification and we'll be able to show our work and, and show the math that 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 again tells the story that hey, expenses outdo revenue. I guarantee you we don't have any fat built into the to the system that we say, well, here's all the extras we do because of all the extra money we've got. Right. And, and I just I ask that question in case one of my residents come back and say, So you go ahead and vote this in, or I vote this in, and what happens in two years they come back? Oh, well, we're gonna put this on or we're gonna do this or we need this. So how do I just, that's what I'm saying. How do oh, I, yeah. and you're Missy, right. Nobody I mean, has a crystal ball. I know. And it's the same way with all of us. We didn't think if this was going to end up like we are now, but. Well, yeah. it's the same when you do a police levy. I mean, you put a police levy on with the expectation it's going to cover X number of time for so long. And then, you know, when you have to go back, you have to go back. I mean, that, that's just the way it is. Oh, and, and that's, that's a sore subject right now. <laughs> I know that's we, we kind of missed a, a big spot in, in that calculation with the police levy. And that's why we want to make sure we don't miss it with this one. Yeah. Um, so for right now, it sounds like charities got some work to do with the county. It, would everybody be good with meeting back the afternoon of, uh, let's say, uh, June 11th? Uh, I'm I'm good on June 11th. That's Friday. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. I am too. I'm good. Okay. And Charity, if you have any questions or need anything, just holler. Okay, I'm working on an email right now to Mr. Hartlobe, so. Okay. At what time, Jason? Or what time is better for you all? Yeah. That's I prefer question. during the working hours. I have enough <laughs> hours in the evening. Yeah, I've yeah. got... I would prefer not to do a Friday night. Better. Yeah. How about a one o'clock? One o'clock on the eleventh. That's, that's fine. fine. Yeah, right. one that's fine. JC will be at work, so it's all good. <laughs> yeah, and Missy. Yes. Um, I mean, I guess part of what you know to answer part of your question, um, as far as what do you tell the residents, you know, the the levy that we're operating under now is ten years old. Right. So it's sustained oh, no. us for the last 10 years. Right. So, you know, that's one thing that you could tell them is, exactly. you know, if you pass this, you know, they, they've operated on this, the, right. the same levy for, for 10 years. Right. Well, and, and add to that the fact that probably the last three, we've been upside down. Yes. Right. So, I mean, that, and that's part of the narrative that we have to get people to understand is that, look, we're not looking to just jump this up. We're looking to make something right that has it, that, that has been askew for a couple of years now. So um, we're, we're trying to be very transparent and uh, open and honest with our residents just so that they see that this isn't a, a, nothing that we do has an alternate agenda other than supporting the township and making sure that what the township is required by law to do it's able to, to meet those obligations with uh, our service providers. 
Okay, and and JC and 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 Chief Fletcher, or right, would you two still be interested? I know a while back we talked about having a uh, come to meeting, open uh, house. Yes, uh, would would y'all not? Well, yeah, or meet at the fire, whatever. Would uh, would you be willing to do that? Still, I mean, if people, if residents have questions for them to come talk to you, you mean like a question and answer session? Yes, remember we talked about doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. JC, are you okay with that? Yeah, I mean, this is a collaborated effort. It's going to sure. take everybody's support. Yeah. It's going to take everybody's selling this money. And if everybody's not on board selling it, that's where we're going to run into issues. Right. right. And I just, uh, what I'm saying is, instead of me trying to answer questions of the residents, if if we have this meet and greet and you two are up there and the, and the people can say, well, what about this? Well, what you all can answer it better than what I can. That's what that I guess that's what I'm or saying. Or Sonia and Glenda can answer it so that it, they're not necessarily putting the fire chiefs uh, there in the line of fire directly unless they need to. It needs to be all of us. Yeah, I, mean, I, mean, I, yeah, I assumed it would be the whole shebang. I mean, I we can speak for JC, but we're most comfortable answering operational questions. Right. The financial questions, obviously, to our bosses. Just yes. Oh, yeah. Like yeah. No. No. Yes. Yes. Yeah, and I and and I don't I don't have an issue, and I don't think Glenna would have an issue. Okay. And I don't think Chief Fletcher would have an issue, or Sonia. Okay. But doing an open house at both firehouses. Okay. All of us are there. Yes. And that gives North and South residents an opportunity at two different times and dates that if they do have concerns or questions, that they can identify and have those questions answered. Right. Okay. So I'll let you guys look at your calendars and I'll either give you a call sometime this week and we'll see if we can get something. And then maybe we can announce that at the next meeting at the June yeah. 11th meeting. Well, is that something that we'd want to plan once we have the ballot work done and we act, you know, let's say at the end, start at the end of August and then yes. do like a full court press through uh, the November prime or the November election. Yeah. I and, think you do that closer to the election or once yep. you have a ballot. You want yeah. to keep it fresh in people's minds yep. so that so they, know, they understand so know what we're asking. Yep. Yeah. I'm going to apologize because I need to be somewhere at five o'clock. <laughs> Not so. a problem. <laughs> Does close. anyone else have anything else? You're late. I know. <laughs> All right, I'll make a motion that we adjourn then if there's nothing else. I'll second. Trustee Wynn? Yes. Trustee Hartshorn? Yes. Trustee Mears? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Appreciate your time. Thank you for helping us. No problem. Um, Have a good evening. You too. Bye.